Uh, right, we are now faced with a mega table of um, electro potentials. The first thing it wants me to do is uh, draw a label diagram to set up cells two and four. So let's give that one a go. So I got cell two. You notice is Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus. So I haven't got a metal. So I've got Fe2 plus aqueous and I've got Fe3 plus aqueous, and they are both going to be at one mole per decimeter cube. I need an electrode of platinum for that. Connect it up to a voltmeter. So let's look at number four. Oh, number four has got silver, so I can use a silver electrode for that. So that's good, AG, and this one is just going to be AG plus aqueous, again at one mole per decimeter cube. And then going across, I have my salt bridge, like so. Okay, this one, uh, quite sure, this one does catch people out. Uh, what the charge carries through the wire, it's going to be electrons, electrons go through the wire. Through the solution, it's going to be ions. Um, okay, it's kind of like from AS. Uh, write down the overall cell reaction. Well, um, if we have a look, going back to the table, um, it was two and four. This one's the most positive, so that's going to go that way. So let's do it here. I've got F oh, you noted quite nicely they both just involve one electron, so I don't think it's timed anything. So we said that's going to go that way. Fe3 plus plus silver is going to go to silver plus plus Fe2 plus like so. Um, and then it says, what's my cell potential? The cell potential is the difference between those two, which is going to be 0.43 volts. 0.77 minus 0.34. Right, I'm going to keep the table up, uh, you follow through the paper. I need to select on this table a species which will oxidise Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. So I need something more positive than 0 0.77 volts. Oh, and it looks like it's going to be uh, this one here from the looks of it. Uh, so uh, number five up. So it's going to be chlorine. So the species is chlorine, which is going to do that, because that one has to go that way for that one to go that way. And then the next one is I need a species that will reduce Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus, but will not reduce Ag plus. So I need something in the middle of those two, so something between 0.34 and 0.77. So the one it's going to be is iodine here. So that goes that way, it's going to be the iodide ion which will do it because that one is more negative, so it will get reversed. So it's the iodide ion. Oh right, a bit of a wordy one now, but we don't mind that, do we? Five marks in the bag. So, one important difference between a fuel cell and a conventional electrochemical cell. A fuel cell converts energy from a reaction of a fuel with oxygen into electrical energy. Um, what is the equation? Um, 2H2 plus O2 gives you uh, 2H2O. Uh, that's what's actually happening. How can you store the hydrogen? You can store it under pressure. It can be adsorbed on a solid. Or it can be absorbed within a solid. So just make sure you get those uh, right. Uh, and uh, why some people consider use of hydrogen consumes more energy than fossil fuels. Uh, well, to get this point, you can get oxygen from the air, that's not a problem. Uh, well, you don't. Well, you're fine. Uh, but how do I get my hydrogen? 
well, I need to probably put uh, uh, burn fossil fuels, perhaps, to actually um, uh, get the hydrogen in the first place. Maybe from the electrolysis of water, the opposite of this, or something like that. So, energy will be required to make hydrogen gas. Uh, right, let's carry on. Um, first of all, oh, nice equilibrium one. Um, we're going to run KC. You guys should be uh, jumping with joy if this comes up. Nice and easy, one mark in the bag. What's going to be the units? Well, let's have a look. This is going to be moles per decimeter cube squared. That is in moles per decimeter cubed to the power of four, because that's the one that's the uh, So that's going to go, that's going to go, so it's going to be moles to the minus two decimeters to the six. Oh, right, this is quite an interesting one. Um, they want me to calculate the amount, a mole of ammonia present in the equilibrium mixture. So, I'm going to use Kc in some way, because they've given it to me. Yeah. So, uh, what can I, first of all, they've told me how many moles of nitrogen and hydrogen. I need to, first of all, work out my concentration of nitrogen. 7.2, the volume is 6 decimeters cubed, so that gives me 1.2 moles per decimeter cubed. Concentration of hydrogen is going uh, to be 12 divided by 6, which is 2 moles per decimeter cubed. I then need to bang that into Kc. Uh, let's just put Kc up again to uh, remind ourselves. Kc, they told me, is 8.00 times 10 to the minus 2, that's going to equal the concentration of ammonia squared over 1.2 for nitrogen times 2 cubed, which is equal to the concentration of ammonia squared over 9.6. And again, I really would recommend you, you always do this calculation first. So, that leaves me with the concentration of ammonia squared is going to be 8.00 times 10 to the minus 2 times 9.6, which gives you 0.768. If I square root that, that gives me 0.876, but that's my concentration. They want the moles, so the moles is going to be 0.876. That's in moles per decimeter cubed, remember. The volume is actually 6 decimeters cubed, so I need to times it by 6 to find out how much is in 6 decimeters cubed, which gives me 5.26 mole. Okay, uh, now we go back to some AS chemistry. Uh, why, uh, explain in terms of Le Chatelier's principle, why the equilibrium yield of ammonia is increased when I increase pressure. Well, I've got four moles of gas on left, whoops, left hand side, going to two moles of gas on the right hand side. Uh, when I increase pressure, increase P, equilibrium moves to side with fewer moles, which is therefore the right hand side. And therefore uh, the yield of ammonia is going to increase. Uh, this one's a little bit trickier. Explain um, why in terms of Kc, the equilibrium yield of ammonia is I would always put Kc up when you do this one, um, just to remind myself. Key thing to know, Kc does not change with pressure. So Kc has to stay the same. 
So, if we go back to this here, hopefully you can see these concentration terms overall are to the power of four. So if I increase pressure, it's going to have a greater effect on um, concentration terms on the bottom than on the top. So if I suddenly double the pressure, the, the effect here is going to be much more significant than up here. So it has to therefore change, the concentrations have to change, the number of moles has to change, so that Kc returns the same. So the amount of NH3 will increase um, and amount of N2 and H2 will decrease to restore um, Kc. Oh, uh, right, yeah. So, um, construct an equation for methane. Methane, let's try that again, reacting with steam to produce hydrogen uh, and carbon, let's go for carbon dioxide, you could also get carbon monoxide as well. To balance that you need two waters, well two steams actually, and four hydrogens. Suggest another process that we could obtain hydrogen gas for, for the harbour process. Um, electrolysis of water could be one. Right, good, we've got a nice Gibbs free energy coming up now. So, uh, this you should be happy with. The first thing you need to work out is delta S for the system, which remember is the sum of the entropy of the products minus the sum of the entropy of the reactants. If you do that, I get the product, which is two ammonias, two times one by two, that's 384, minus 191 for nitrogen, and three times 131 for hydrogen. That gives you 384 minus 584, which gives you minus 200. Remember that is in joules per mole per Kelvin. At that point, I would change it, just to remind you that you must use it in kilojoules per mole per Kelvin. Okay, they want me to do it at 25 degrees C, which we know is 298 Kelvin. Gibbs free energy, delta H minus T delta S, Delta H, they've told me, is minus 92. Minus 298 times minus 0.2. That gives me minus 92 plus 59.6, which is minus 32.4 kilojoules per mole. Therefore, Gibbs free energy is less than zero and therefore it is a feasible reaction.